So um, the first thing we always want to do for every single video is, all, or not every video, but for every problem, always look to factor out the perfect, or factor out the GCF. We notice in problem number one, there is no GCF. There's no number or variable that they share that we can factor out. So the next thing we do is we look for what do they have in, what, is there any kind of special pattern that they have? So what we look for, this pattern that we're going to talk about, is what we call perfect squares. Meaning if you have x squared plus 2 times a number a times x plus a squared. So what we want to look is look at our last number 64, right? Now you guys can factor these the traditional method, right? If you guys remember, we did a times c and b, right? And you figured out what it was. So you said 64 and 16. What two numbers multiply to give you 64, add to give you 16, right? Hopefully you guys can do that in your head. But one thing I want you guys to do is start looking for patterns. And this is the pattern of the perfect squares. Look at the last number. Is that a square number? Yes, it is. So you already know that is 8 squared, right? Then look at the middle term. If a, if a squared is 64, that means a is what? 8. Is our middle term 2 times 8? Yes. So therefore, if it's rewritten in this form, you can easily factor it to x plus a times x plus a. So you don't have to go through writing this down. Yeah, you can. You don't have to. You guys can see, oh, that's a squared number, and that's double times that squared number. So therefore, I can just write this as x plus 8 times x plus 8. Now let's look at the next one. Is negative 4, is, or is negative four a square number? Well, negative 4 isn't. But is 4 a square number? Yes, it is, right? And of that squared number is negative 4. Um, that's wrong. That's plus 4. Sorry. No wonder. Is 4 a square number? No wonder that didn't make sense. Is 4 a square number? Yes. Is the middle term t 2 times that or negative 2 times that? Yes. So rather than doing all this by putting 4 up top, negative 4 on the bottom, thinking about it, you guys should automatically see, oh, square number, that's 2 times it. I can write this as x minus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0. All right? Now, let's go through this. If this, yes? Now, because the thing about it, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, right? Let's FOIL it out. x times x is x squared. Negative 2 is negative 2x minus 2x plus 4. Negative 2 minus negative 2 is negative 4, right? Okay, so if, if you have a question about that, or whenever you're doing your homework, listen, it's a good question, because what, do you can, what can you always do to check your work? Just FOIL it back out to make sure it works, right? So just if you get stuck, you're like, ah, I don't know if that works, FOIL it real quick. It didn't take me long to do that. Um, however, I did, write the, I did set them equal to zero. So after we factor, we set them both equal to zero. But ladies and gentlemen, do you notice it's the same thing, right? So we can just say x, E, or x plus 8 equals 0 for both of them, so therefore x equals negative 8. Do you remember we talked about one solution, Emma? Remember you asked her, like, when does it have one solution? What's our only solution here? Negative 8. And then for this one, x equals what? 2. So do we have two solutions? No, we only have one. Right? So that's, that is a little technique you guys can use. Okay? Not too bad. 